Capitalism is going to capitalism, and it's rolling out some new ideas. This time, it's WestJet announcing their new ultra basic fare, because I guess the word steerage was already taken. And while the seats are a little cramped, the Irish dancing is outstanding. So ultra basic is essentially the exact same thing as their previous basic fare, it's just worse. It's ultra basic. And it's replacing the basic fare. So in order to get any of the luxuries that you used to, you're going to have to pony up because basically everything's the same with two major changes. First up, you board last and you get seated at the back of the plane. Everybody else on the plane gets on first, then you. So you get to sit at the back of the plane and enjoy the dulcet tones of an airplane bathroom. Lucky you. But also, you no longer get to bring a carry-on. You get to bring one personal item, like a purse or a small bag. Maybe even a small bag containing an accessory puppy, like your Paris Hilton from the early 2000s. They're just literally seeing how much crap customers are willing to put up with. They are trying to dress up a reduction in service quality as some sort of great opportunity to save money. When in reality, we all know the prices aren't going down. It's just that service quality is. And that way, WestJet's able to make more money for shareholders. Honestly, at this point, if they had a choice, they'd probably put seats on the wing. And I think it's also worth noting that Air Canada hilariously announced the same week that there's going to be free beer and wine on their flights for the rest of the year. Give them credit for their timing at least, but there's a bunch of underlying reasons behind this and a big part of it is the death of competition in Canada. We've seen so many startup airlines fail. Swoop, Sunwing, Zoom, Lynx, and a bunch of others that sound like different types of Old Spice deodorant. And a big reason why those have struggled is because of the costs of operating a business in Canada. They're just very high and the volume of customers is pretty low. We used to have a public air carrier and then it went private and became the current Air Canada that we all know and I don't know, love seems like the wrong word here, have made our peace with? But this story also illustrates just how far WestJet has fallen. Once upon a time, it was a model company. One of the things that they highlighted was how it was in no small part employee-owned. In 2019, 19% of the shares were employee-owned, and 80% of the workers owned shares in the company. Since then, those numbers have been significantly reduced, and many of the shares were bought out when the company was purchased by Onyx. A major buyback eliminated a lot of that employee voice, and then company values shifted. They became more about extracting value than they were about creating it. And as a result, WestJet now has a pretty rough record of on-time arrivals, passenger treatment, and more. But I really want to highlight that this is not the fault of individual workers. WestJet has a lot of great folks who work there. This is the fault of a company who's demanding that they do more with less all the time. They're being demanded to do more on tighter timelines and to hold costs down, while also demanding that travelers pay more and receive less services. This just makes travelers even more frustrated and they take that frustration out on frontline workers, not executives. As always, it's the workers who suffer the most followed shortly by the consumers. And the executives, they're gonna be fine. But I think it's also worth noting that Canada pays some of the most expensive airfare in the world for the privilege of being treated terribly. Lucky us. And as always, there will be no meaningful action from the Canadian government to manage this. They just largely gave up on anti-competitive rules and they're just gonna let things play out. What fun. And now for this week's rant. 